Can you tell us about this job you're moving to and how it compares to your old job? It's actually a paid employment. It's a job rather than being a politician. And I, it was never my intention to hang around the well, council. Well, hang on, you get paid as a politician. Yeah, we get a, an allowance as a politician, but I, I haven't got an employment contract. The current role I have as, as, a, polit as a politician is that I can advise on policy I can advise uh, officers in terms of the way I want them to take uh, the housing service. I can't instruct, I don't manage anybody, whereas I move into a role where I'm chief executive of a housing organisation, where I have executive responsibility for managing an organisation. So they are quite different in their, in their function. The organisation that I'm moving to is called Elim Housing. They currently own and manage 800 homes from Birmingham to Devon and into Newport, but with a sort of concentration of housing in Bristol and, and South Gloucestershire. They provide standard housing, also supported housing, housing for homeless people, housing for homeless single parents. They manage traveller sites across the southwest uh, uh, of England. So they provide a wide range of different housing services. They're not at the moment a very large developer. It's quite difficult for small associations to compete with the with the larger ones. But they've they've got a a, a small but steady development program at the moment. But surely, you know, as, as part of the council and the Labour Party, you could do something about policy. You could change the direction of the ship. All you can do. Uh, working for a housing association is actually build the houses. You can't actually improve the whole situation, Paul. Well, I, I, I think it's wrong to think that housing associations only exist to build houses. If you take Elim Housing, where I'm going, they manage 800 homes. They house over a 1,000 people. Um, I, I would say you start with the quality of service to the people who already live in your homes rather than focusing on on what on what you can build i mean i've worked in the housing association sector for over 30 years and so in a sense uh, coming onto the council was a was a, an interruption of the, of that work i never intended to stay on the council um, for more than two terms we've had this term extended uh, because of uh, covid an opportunity has come up within the city which I mean, this particular role, um, the last time it came up was 30 years ago. So th these opportunities don't come very often. And I've taken the decision to, uh, to take advantage of that opportunity. What about the travellers? Because uh, there's a lot of um, people wondering why the council is pursuing an, an injunction at the moment against travellers in St Werburgh's. My understanding is that the injunction that's been served in a part of St Werburgh's is uh, van dwellers rather than travellers. And you'll know that there's quite strict legal definitions of gypsy Romani travellers as opposed to people who, who live, in, live in vehicles. The reason that the council is uh, taking an injunction for that area of St Werburgh's is the level of um, antisocial behaviour, which has been reported um, by residents uh, in that area. So, I, in some respects, it's very similar to the action that was that was taken in Greenbank. We've also offered people alternative uh, places to pitch uh, their vehicles. So they they're not being criminalised; they're just being asked to vacate a particular area of road space. I mean, the travellers themselves will say that the sites they're being offered are way too far out of town. And, and you know, if they're cycling into work every day, it, you know, it's an impossible place to put them. As I say, I mean, you keep using the phrase travellers. I don't believe that they are travellers. I believe that they are people who live in vans. So the, the, the sites that we're, that we're offering are further out from the, the centre of the city. But, of course, people, there are lots of places where people can park a vehicle uh, closer to the centre of the city and, and in many places people are living in vehicles. There are no problems particularly uh, caused by that and, and it operates fine, in a fine balance between uh, those people and the, uh, the, the residents who live in 
uh, houses and flats. It seems a bit unfair to do this to the travellers on the one year during the pandemic when none of them are away at festivals as they would normally be. Well, firstly, most of the festivals are finished by now. I don't really understand the point. The, the issue is not about stopping people living in vehicles or parking up on parts of the city. It's about the level of antisocial uh, behaviour that's been caused, which has disrupted the lives of people living in that in that area. Well, why is it that the Bristol City Council is employing this barrister and paying for them out of the waste budget rather than the housing budget? Surely these are people that need housing rather than fly-tipped rubbish. So I don't know about the employment of the barrister or where the enforcement arm of the council comes not under the housing department, it comes under neighbourhood enforcement. So I presume it's funded through the council tax it's not it's not the enforcement function is not a housing function so i think you'd have to address that question to councillor steve pierce who's responsible for enforcement rather than me what's your legacy going to be do you think paul doing housing in the city because i think quite a few people have said that at least the council is now building council houses again i would like to hope that there there are several legacies. I think one is the re-emergence of council housing within the city, which is not just about us building more, although that's really important. It's also uh, about us improving the service uh, that council tenants uh, get, which there's a, there's a large piece of work on making that service much more uh, responsive to, to local people and to our, to our tenants. But also We've got plans to work with tenants on some of our existing low quality estates to, to rebuild them so that we will have a major new generation of council housing across the city. That's one. I think the other one would be the massive growth of community led housing within the city. We've worked with the community led housing sector and across the city, they've got plans to build a thousand homes, one of the biggest schemes in South Mead has just received planning permission. There are other applications in for sites across the city and people taking control of their own housing issues through community-led housing. I think Bristol is seen as being at the forefront of that and I, I'm sure that that will continue because whilst I've helped facilitate it, there it's not down to me, it's down to scores of people across the city who are really passionate about meeting their local housing needs themselves. OK, Councillor Paul Smith, at the moment still just about uh, housing position on the Cabinet. Thanks very much for joining us. OK, thanks, Tony. You take care. So that's Paul Smith there, Martin. I mean, you've got to think to yourself, well, maybe he just feels that he, as I asked him, in fact, maybe he just feels that he's done all he can now and that the next year would be a waste of time doing housing in the city cabinet. He's much better to go out and become a uh, chief executive of a housing association where he's got actually a little bit more control himself rather than having the mayor staring over his shoulder the whole time. Well, <clears throat> not necessarily about the mayor staring over his shoulder. Um, basically, he made the case there that he's basically done the job. He wouldn't, I mean, if there'd been an election in May, that would have been, you know, he might have been re-elected, but he's decided he's, he's going to move on. And, you know, that's up to him, isn't it, really? It certainly is.